I did a congressional district map for my congresswoman in southeastern Pennsylvania, and then I decided, well, why don't I make some maps for the rest of the state? And templates really help. And also, I'm able to just import the specific data that I need for each uh, district, and I wanted to show that. So I'll start with a template, and then I'll basically recreate this map for District 17. New from template. So we'll take district 10 and we'll turn that into 17. And I just want to show some things that I've set up in this document. I have swatches and I have a base color and a highlight color. And if I wanted to, so I'll just close some of these. Uh, say I wanted this to be this base color to be dark green instead I could just take this green and hold down on the option key or the alt key and go up to base color and change it So now district 17 is green and I could do this highlight color and Take that one and just drag that up to there as well. So now our highlight color is a light green So right now I have a map view called state map, and this has all of my projected information in it. And I have this scale bar in there. I have um, my text that relates to those to that state map in there. And I'll take this um, layer, come back over to layers, and duplicate that, and we'll lock that, lock everything else and call this District 17 and hit return. So now that I have this, this is the same. I can turn off state map and you can see um, that has an opacity, layer opacity. So this actually, we'll just make this 100%. Okay, for this District 17, I want to select that 17 and I'll just lock everything. Lock that but select everything else and delete everything else. Then I'll unlock it. And we'll just give that a color too. All right. Now um, we can go back over to our map views and duplicate the state map map view. And I'll call this District 17. And then I can drag this district into here and do auto scale. So that fills up the screen. Really, I want 150,000. And that'll make things smaller. You can see there's some overlap here. So we have that, and I want to bring this Pennsylvania map over. So we'll just drag this. So that came down there. And then I can come back to my layers and go to my title. Bring that over. Okay, so we have District 17. Now we're going to import some data to go on top of that, and this will be municipal data. So if I import data, and I'm going to use a PostGIS database, I have a database on my computer. It's a Macintosh computer. And it's really pretty easy to set up a Postgres, PostGIS database. Anyway, I'll select here, go to Tiger, and we'll choose our tables. And I'm going to select municipalities color. And select that. Um, I want to just click on that. 
and I should have should have used a spatial query. So I'll specify spatial filter. And we're going to go intersects with this layer called District 17. And click OK and OK and OK. So the data comes in. It's not projected at the same projection. I just need to drag that up to District 17 in my map views. And I'll delete this. Now I can come back over. I'm going to lock everything else. Let's just select that District 17. And then I'll unlock the map view. Um, not sure why I have two of those, but I'll just delete one. And then I'm going to go to Object, Map Publisher, and we can use Crop to Shape. So I have my shape selected, and I can do only PA Municipalities Color Area 1. OK. This will take a minute, and it will crop everything except for a few polygons that are touching where there might have been an overlap. Close. Uh, OK, so we have I locked the District 17 and just delete a couple of these. Oh, look at that. So I want this one, whatever's outside. I don't want to lock whatever's inside. And this last one here, you see how it's in both it's both in and out of the district. So I'm going to create a new layer in and out district. And then I'm going to use my option key and, and just drag up to copy that polygon. And then I want this district as well. So I'll option key and copy that as well. And then I can lock everything else and select all and use my Pathfinder tool and divide. So once it's divided, the colors here aren't the greatest, but I'm just going to cut this. This is the part that's outside of the district, and I'm going to select all and delete the rest. And then I can paste back in front and go to a graphic style. And I have a graphic style called Split Municipality, which you'll see adds these lines. And I'll just add an opacity of multiply for that. And that's good. But before I do anything else, I want to select all. See how many points there are for these lines? One of the things I love about working in Illustrator is that I can simplify. You know, it might not seem like a big deal, but to get rid of all these point-to-point -point lines and turn them into Bezier curves, just it's rewarding. So we went from 43,000 points down to 7,600 points. And OK. Next, we want to use the thematic tools. And I'll just click here and go to, I, can, I have a few different ones set up. Let's say here's one. I need to specify the layer, which is the PA municipalities. And each rule applies some kind of visual property. So color ID equals 1 gives me this color. Uh, color ID equals 3 equals this, like that type of thing. So I can just apply that. And, and we get that. And I'm going to keep this one simple, but I'll just show another. Let's try Holiday. Um, holiday Wharf. So I'll double click on that, specify that layer, and just hit Apply. So you can see how we can get different options. I think this might have been missing. This green just doesn't seem like it makes sense. So I'm going to click on that Holiday Wharf and see which one is missing. So we had rule one, two, three, four. See that four? Number four is not set. So this rule number four needs to be equals four.
and now I can apply it. And it automatically saves when you apply. Um, what color is this? Let's just take a look at the map attributes. Well, first layers. So this is color ID equals five. Okay. So come back over to map themes, holiday, and we'll just change that to five. I guess I might've duplicated things and not made the changes. And let's check six while I'm here, seven, that's okay, apply. Okay, so now that's a little bit lighter. And see the scale bar here? I had that in the state map, so it doesn't really make sense. But I can go back to map views now and drag that state. I have to unlock it and then drag the state map into District 17. And now you have our scale bar. So this just kind of gives you a sense for how I'd go about creating a map. There were a couple other things that I could do, like I had this paper texture, so I could bring that up top. And it doesn't really show up that much on the screen, but you can kind of see that there's like a, a texture to it. And you can see that these are inner glows. I'll just show you one. So if I select that and I go to appearance, This has an inner glow of 60% and a 10 point blur. And it goes from the center. So that just gives you a sense for that. And we could also duplicate this. And, and just here, I've got a graphic style here municipality borders. Oh, I need to select all. Oops. I probably didn't want my legend in there. So we have that and lock this one. And this can all be, we can just go to our appearance and just clear the appearances there. And then go to graphic styles and add that, basically just a one point stroke. It's not a big deal. But you get that. I guess one last thing we might do is might as well label the label these. So uh, that's the map themes, and this is the labels. So we just click on labels here. I'm just going to. I don't want to confuse you. Close these. So I have the PA municipalities. We're going to keep that one. And we'll go to labels. I use Map Label Pro, which. I think is totally worth it. And so I click here, click label, we give it the name. And I have some defaults set here. And label. Okay, those come in. The only thing I wish is that, you know, I wish these could be center justified on the import, but they're not. So I use a script that changed that point from left justify to center justify. And then we can, of course, you know, move things to where we want them and clean up the text. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed this or at least gotten something out of it. I look forward to any feedback you might have.